The final item of business today is the Members' Business Debate on Motion No. 10420 in the name of Gordon Macdonald on celebrating the contribution of independent retailers to the Scottish economy. This debate will be concluded without any questions being put, and I would be grateful if those members who wish to speak in the debate could press the request to speak buttons now, please. I call on Gordon Macdonald to open the debate. Seven minutes, please. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Before I begin, I would like to thank John Lee of the Scottish Grocers Federation for his assistance, and I also welcome those convenience store owners who are in the gallery. The independent convenience store sector has been a cornerstone of all of our local communities for generations. Whether it's a pint of milk and a newspaper in the morning, or a few messages on your way home from work, they are open, ready to serve, from early in the morning to late at night in every city, town, rural and island community across Scotland. Indeed, Scotland has more convenience stores per head of the population than any other part of the UK, employing over 41,000 people. To put that into context, that is more people than the combined total employment provided in agriculture, forestry and fishing, or indeed in the motor trade in Scotland. It is not just the direct employment that local shopkeepers provide, but also their contractors and suppliers. The vast majority of convenience stores are owned and operated by small business owners, and because they are part of the local community, they tend to use local contractors and suppliers. Research by the Scottish Grocers Federation identified that a typical convenience store reinvest a quarter of a million pounds into the local economy by using local tradesmen, local produce suppliers, local shop fitters, local garages, as well as local legal and accountancy firms. As a result, convenience stores are also, I believe, one of the cornerstones of a community in the same way as the primary school, the community centre, the post office and the pub. Their presence in a village, town or in a neighbourhood helps to support that community. In addition, many corner shops provide a range of services from a cash machine, bill payment service, home delivery or even just a notice board. It all helps to sustain that local community. But all is not well in the convenience store sector, especially among those family-owned businesses as there are two main issues affecting them. The growth of the big four supermarket convenience store network and the resultant overprovision in grocery stores. The decision by the large supermarket chains to move into the convenience store sector in Scotland has put pressure on small independents. In the current economic climate, customers' income, in many cases, has not kept pace with inflation and the outcome is that the available spend in an area is spread more thinly across all the retailers, resulting in the viability of some stores to be questioned. The expansion by the big four supermarket chains into convenience stores is not just detrimental to small independent shopkeepers, but other small businesses, as these large conglomerates tend to have national contracts for maintenance, servicing and international suppliers, resulting in the loss of local economic benefit generated by having a locally owned store. The other issue I mentioned is over-provision of grocery stores, and I'll use an example from my own constituency to highlight the potential problems. Along the stretch of the B701 from Oxgangs Road North to Collington Mains Drive, there are two large supermarkets one multiple convenience store operator and three independently owned convenience stores in a distance of just over a mile in length. An area of my constituency that most people would consider as being well served by grocery stores has healthy competition and choice. However, the Council has decided, along with its partner, to sell land previously occupied by a social work building and a church to a major grocery discount store operator. The local community are split. Many families would welcome the discounter, while others have signed a petition opposing the building of yet another supermarket. The reason for doing so 
include the effect of increased traffic congesting, resulting in additional traffic noise and deteriorating air quality, plus the effect on existing employment and ultimately possible store closures. There is also disappointment within the local community that the land has not been designated for housing as there is unmet demand for new housing in the area. Many members of the now closed St John's Church were under the impression that the land would be used for much needed housing. Now they find a potential licensed premise will be on the previous church ground in an area where there already exists eight licensed premises. It is times like this that the city planners have to take a step back and ask themselves whether the location of another supermarket is in the best interests of the whole community. In doing so, council officials should examine the job creation claims and whether these employment opportunities are really new posts or simply displaced employment from other existing operators who need to downsize their operation to meet the reduced revenue. A study by the UK Retail Trade Association, ACS, titled Job Creation Claims in New Supermarket Retail Developments, found that in many instances the claims of jobs created simply represented a headcount. Part-time posts make up 49% of all retail opportunities and therefore the actual full-time equivalent jobs will be in most cases substantially lower than that claimed by the supermarket. If this new supermarket is given the go-ahead, then my concern is for the survival of all three small independent stores and possibly the reduced employment opportunities provided by the existing supermarket operators. The convenience store sector, unlike the large supermarket chains, doesn't have reserves that allow them to trade at a loss for a prolonged period of time. Since 2008, many small businesses experienced difficult trading circumstances, and it was the introduction of the Scottish Government's Small Business Bonus Scheme that assisted them. Across Scotland, 92,000 small businesses, many of them owners of local convenience stores, have had their rates abolished or substantially reduced. But it's not just about existing businesses. We need to make our shopping areas more attractive, offering a wider, more diverse mix of high street businesses. We need to encourage young entrepreneurs to create new businesses, making use of the premises that are currently vacant in our towns and centres town centres and neighbourhood shopping areas. A more diverse high street or shopping area will generate a higher footfall that should benefit all businesses in the area. The Carnegie Trust has developed a number of retail initiatives from pop-up retail festivals to a town's characteristic online toolkit. It stated in its briefing that we recognise that for many towns, the contribution of independent retailers is a crucial factor in the long-term sustainability, diversity and vibrancy of high streets. Presiding officer, this sustainable diversity and vibrancy can only be achieved if everyone involved in developing our towns and cities recognises the importance of the contribution made by the independent convenience store sector to our economy and understands the importance of sustaining it. Many thanks. I now call Margaret McCulloch to be followed by Chick Brodie. Thank you, President Officer. I was expecting a couple more minutes as I write down my notes because I just decided at the very last minute to step in. Um, independent stores actually play a very, very important part in the local economy throughout the country. Thinking about it, people like my dad, retired people, my dad used to go along to the local shop um, for his newspapers, his milk, his pension, and also it became a social event because he got to know personally that actual retailer. And when you think about it, other people in the same circumstances as my dad, that might have been the only person that person actually spoke to the whole day. So it's really, really important. The retailers actually really do pay play a very, very important part in social communication with individuals. But also as well, from the economy point of view for retailers um, or independent retailers, they're under a lot of pressure just now because of the economy and they have been struggling to survive. 
Things like parking um, can actually hinder their sales as well, which is uh, quite a problem. And also, there, as I said before, they're actually struggling with the big multinational chains, which do provide a service, but they don't provide a personal service, which is very, very important. The local retailers as well, coming back to my sort of previous life as a trainer, these local, these local um, retailers provide also employment for a lot of young people as well. And they were at the forefront and at the forefront of delivering the modern apprenticeship programmes and take an active part in the modern apprenticeship programmes and they see the benefit of it. So that's really important as well. I hopefully, because I'm also the convener of the, the Towns and Towns Centres Cross Party Group, I'm hoping that the government will actually look at more initiatives and also local authorities, look at what they can do to actually preserve these businesses and help them to survive. So in winding up my very short speech, hopefully I'll ask the Scottish Government just now, what can they actually do to help these local businesses? We're looking for more support for them in the way of training and also to help to look at how can you tackle the red tape that hinders these businesses to actually th survive and develop their businesses. Thank you, President Officer. Many thanks. And I now call Chick Brodie to be followed by Gavin Brown. Yeah, thank you, President Officer. Um, may I thank Gordon MacDonald for bringing Mr. this debate... Mr Brodie, could you pull your Lord microphone Department. up, please? Thank you. Thank you, President Officer. For bringing this debate to Parliament this evening, and, and I echo his sentiments, uh, read the contribution made by uh, our food, clothing, and services retailers. It's right that we celebrate the uh, contribution of our independence convenience stores retailers, often the Cinderella of the, our focused sectors uh, as part of retail in our national economic strategy. Strong independent businesses have a vital role to play in the future, not just of our high streets, as Gordon mentioned, but uh, if they're strong and well managed, then they can attract and grow, can attract new business and, and, and grow into more medium-sized operations. As a whole, the retail sector employs 255,000 jobs, 41,000 in this particular area. It is a very large private sector employer, employing 14% of the non-government workforce. Our retailers have, a difficulty, uh, have had a difficult few years with the recession. Small and medium uh, retail businesses, particularly the independent convenience stores, have seen a decline in sales volumes from 2008 until the first half of 2012, and there has been some limited growth since 2012. On a wider scale, the success in the feed-through and the, the leakage from in the, the, the spending, the recent Commonwealth Games, has indeed reflected a change, I believe, in, in the footfall figures and in the flow of, of uh, business, which embraces the small independent uh, operations. So I want to, uh, to uh, praise the efforts of the retail sector that uh, has tempted shoppers with not just keen prices and promotions, but with providing best value uh, and customer service quality. The challenge, of course, is to uh, maintain a growth and ensure that we gain long-term benefits from, from the sector. There's also been the challenge to the convenience stores of the out-of-town supermarket developments in the past few years. However, uh, I am told, and in fact in discussions I've had with Lee Sparks, that the supermarkets seem to be reappraising their investment strategies with super supermarkets looking at town centre investment. That will provide the independents with new challenges to be confronted. The Scottish Government has recognised the importance of our retails in its town centre review, which included sectors, experts from all over the country, including some smaller representation of smaller independent units. Looking at sharing resources and services, how do we develop creativity and enterprise, uh, and generally contributing to the health of our uh, town centres. All of that is key. Uh, it's stated in that review that Scottish Government and local authorities needed to recognise and prioritise the importance of town centres for sustainable grow economic growth. And of course, the lifeblood of that uh, flows naturally from uh, the independent uh, convenience stores. Presiding officer, we need to ensure that the retail sector, in, in all its dimensions, 
is seen to offer a good career path. To do so, we need to work with all the skills development providers, uh, our colleges and our employers, securing an aspiration for those who would like to be involved in retail and start uh, at the bottom, if you like, with working with independence, uh, independent convenience stores through the creation of the appropriate uh, 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 apprenticeships. Presiding officer, our independent retailers, as I say, play a vital role in the success of our high streets. And the Town Centre Review Group has made a great start in supporting the sector. Challenges remain. We must embrace those that uh, know how to run independent uh, 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 convenience stores, and there are great opportunities to grow that particular sector. Many thanks. And to now call Gavin Brown to be followed by Kenneth Gibson. Uh, thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. Can I start also by congratulating uh, Gordon MacDonald on securing this debate and by thanking the Scottish Grocers Federation, the National Federation of Retail News Agents and indeed the Carnegie Trust for their very helpful briefings, which I think many members will have taken advantage of in preparing for this debate. Um, we are right to talk about the enormous contribution made to the economy by independent retailers. Some figures have been put out there already, but they are worth repeating. 41,000 people across Scotland employed in the sector, 5,500 stores. And I think, most importantly, though, there is a multiplier effect from those stores. We heard about the stats of investment in stores, but that then leads on to local trades, to shop fitters and to suppliers round about the local area. And it is a matter of fact that a far higher percentage of each pound spent in a local retailer circulates back to the local economy when you compare it to an out-of-town centre or indeed to online. Margaret McCulloch touched on this point too, though, but I, I don't know if this is by accident or by design, but it is remarkable uh, the number of people who get their very first job, their very first opportunity on the employment ladder in some kind of independent retailer. And again, that's something that I think ought to be recognised and indeed applauded. So they contribute nationally and locally, but they're also more than that. They're also a local community hub wherever they happen to be located. We hear in the briefings about the in-store post offices, about the ATMs, about the bill payment services, and something Gordon MacDonald touched on, the fact that they become, uh, in many cases, the main source of advertising for the local community. If you want to find out when the gala day is and what's happening, if you want to find out who are the best local suppliers to speak to uh, for whatever trade, if you want to find out who best, what classes are on, uh, what training events are on, Actually, your local retailer is very often the first port of call and also the best port of call. And many of them, I know, this, do this for free, but even those that charge do so at very reasonable and very, very fair rates. And uh, also, while I, while I have no scientific evidence to back this up, only personal experience, those who do own and operate independent retailers in their community are far more likely, in my experience, to either be involved in or indeed to run their local community council. So when you wrap all that together, they genuinely do give back in a, in a way that many other businesses either don't or do, do so far less. Presenting officer, some of the challenges that the sector faces though have been touched upon, but there are others that haven't been mentioned yet, and I will take time to do that just now. In terms of the challenges mentioned by businesses, business rates is very near the top of the pile. The Scottish Government should be applauded for the small business bonus. We supported it from day one. We encouraged them uh, to accelerate it. And it has, I think, uh, been a resounding success. But I think the question for the Minister, though, the question for all of us now, is where next with the small business bonus? Can we raise the thresholds so that more local retailers come in underneath uh, the, the threshold and actually benefit from it? Could we have more of a stepped system so that if you're just above it, you don't miss out entirely. You still get some benefit from the small business bonus. And is there something we can do to slow down uh, the rises in business rates? I don't offer all the answers, but I think there are questions that all of us have to think about. In terms of regulation, Deputy Presiding Officer, I know this is something that the uh, uh, Minister has form on, uh, particularly in his previous role, but what could, they have been hit uh, retailers by tobacco, by alcohol and indeed environmental burdens. Some businesses are hit by one of them 
many independent retailers have, retailers have been hit by all three over a fairly short space of time. Is there something we can do to reduce uh, the burden of regulation on them? Because it's more difficult to apply to regulation or to comply with regulations as a smaller business as compared to a far larger one. And can we do more in closing, Deputy Presiding Officer, to help them on the issue of illicit trade? Something where the Scottish Grocers Federation hosted an excellent uh, session within the Parliament just a couple of months ago. Illicit trade damages legitimate businesses, harms consumers and helps those who are trying to get around the rules. Um, any of those issues that can be touched upon by the Minister, I think, will be gratefully received. Thank you. Many thanks. I now call Kenneth Gibson. Thank you, Presiding Officer. And I would like to congratulate my colleague Gordon MacDonald on securing uh, today's debate. And the benefits of convenience stores in Scotland are many, as we have heard already in this debate. They boost employment, allow people to start up and develop their own business, enhance the Scottish economy and serve local communities. And Scotland now has more convenience stores per head of population than any other part of the UK, with one shop per 949 people. They are indeed the lifeblood of many of our communities. And convenience stores employ approximately 1.6 per cent of the Scottish working population. Uh, the benefit of independent uh, stores to ethnic minorities is greater than, than, for, any, than for any other group, as 60 per cent of Chinese and 70 per cent of Pakistanis living in Scotland uh, work in small businesses. A Asians, of course, make up only 2.7 per cent of the Scottish population, but are a vital asset to the independent convenience store sector. And, uh, many independent convenience stores are family businesses, and of those, almost two-thirds employ at least one other family member. Independent uh, convenience stores, uh, through hard work of the owners and staff, contribute to economic growth. And industry body IGD has said that the value of the convenience sector across the UK will grow from £35.6 billion in 2013 to £46.2 billion by 2018. Uh, this is also reinforced by the fact that despite an increase in the number of other retail sector shop closures, convenience stores have not followed the same trend with growth in the number of shop openings during January to March uh, 2014 of 10%. Um, now, a convenience store contribute to the local economy. I think it's important to reiterate uh, what has already been uh, uh, said by uh, previous speakers, including uh, the last one, uh, Gavin Brown, and indeed uh, Mr Macdonald himself, which is that they, they contribute to the local economy by using local tradesmen, produce suppliers, shop fitters, garages, legal and accountancy firms. And added services and facilities may be a crucial reason as to why the sector is growing. They're very fleet on foot on their feet. And uh, with developments such as introduction of click and collect, courier delivery and online shopping return services and secure ATMs, uh, footfall will hopefully increase. Now, independent convenience stores are run, run primarily by their owners. One third are women, one in ten are under 30, whilst one percent are over 60. And one in five have been in business for less than half a decade. And one in five of those owners more than one shop. So there's clearly a vast range of people able to operate and develop their own store, thus demonstrating business opportunities within the sector. And more than three quarters of owners are the first generation of their family to own or run a business, uh, creating sustainable jobs for generations of families as well as others in their community. It is, of course, no easy life, and many hours of service have to be dedicated to ensuring customer access for the optimum number of hours, and the reasonable footfall is essential to earn any kind of living, let alone a good one. Uh, many consumers appreciate the importance of supporting their local businesses and not just because of proximity. Uh, consumer trust in uh, local uh, shops uh, continues to be consistently higher than, for example, in supermarkets. And a survey of more than 7,800 shops run by independent corporate retailers reported that despite competition from major supermarkets, local shops are as important to the community as the bobby on the beat. Now, customers uh, uh, become familiar with the, uh, with the staff, as has been pointed out by Margaret McCulloch, but often people also meet there for a wee bit of a, a, a natter and a gossip. And also, many people are attracted by the range and flexibility of the stock which uh, local uh, convenience stores can get in. And they, they, they aid development growth in areas such as employment and the economy uh, and have a very positive uh, impact. They are a vital community asset and enhance community resilience, socio-economic well-being and the social value of enterprise and innovation and their importance to, to the town and village 
uh, shops, the fabric of Scotland cannot be underestimated. But as we've heard, there are storm crowds on the horizon. Profits are being squeezed. We have increased costs at this time, uh, from energy costs to the cost of basic produce. And at challenging times for uh, all people in society, it can be very difficult for uh, shop owners to pass on all increased costs uh, to customers. I therefore uh, believe, as, as Mr Brown has said, that we should look uh, further where possible to reduce the rates burden. Uh, the Small Business Bonus Scheme, I'm sure, has been a tremendous success. We know that the Small uh, Business Federation has said that uh, one in six shops would have went down the, the stank during the recession without it. But we look to see how we can move on uh, from there. And I also reiterate what Gavin has said with regard to the issue of smuggling. Uh, we need to do, take more action to ensure that this does not impact more on the profitability of our small business uh, store sector. Thank you. Many thanks. And I now invite Fergus Ewing to respond to the debate, Minister, in seven minutes, if possible. Thank you. Sure. Thank you very much, Presiding Officer, and I am very grateful to Gordon MacDonald for bringing this debate uh, before us this evening, covering a, a matter of, uh, of huge importance in every part of Scotland. And I am very grateful for the contributions of all members across the Chamber and different parties, recognising the significant role that that uh, independent retailers play in the economy, and that's a very large role, and the retail sector has been quite uh, resilient uh, during the recession. It didn't, uh, to use the technical expression that Mr Gibson brought to the proceedings, go down the stank. Uh, it uh, managed to, to overcome the kind of buffeting of the recession very well, and I'm quite sure that's in part because of the hard work, the effort that, that managers, owners of these independent uh, businesses brought to bear to ensure that they were offering uh, an efficient, friendly, effective service, providing goods, fresh food, uh, and a variety of grocery products which people want throughout the country, giving people what they want and running the businesses well on a family basis. And I used to be one of them, uh, a, uh, as opposed to being a politician. I suppose it's one of them as well in a different kind of context. Um, but uh, as someone who was a small business person, I do remember the, the pleasures and also the anxieties of running a business. Being responsible for the livelihood of a great many other people is uh, a burden to bear, but one that the independent retailers do extremely well in Scotland, as the figures show, and the, the employment in the sector, as has been pointed out, uh, is very substantial indeed. Of course, there are challenges in facing all businesses in Scotland, and the, the, the burden of taxation is one of them, and uh, various members, starting off with Gordon MacDonald, mentioned business rates, uh, and Gavin Brown particularly mentioned that, so we, we are pleased that, that, first of all, we reinstated the uniform business rate when we came in to office in 2007, we did that in 2008, uh, and that uh, ended uh, an, an extra overtaxation of up to uh, eight or nine percent, I believe the figure was, and that made a contribution. Since then, I'm very pleased that we have had a measure of cross-party support for our introduction of the small business bonus, which uh, now assists over 92,000 businesses, two in five premises. Mr. Brown, I think, puts his points very reasonably, suggesting we would like to do more. We would like to do more. There's no question about that, and that applies across the board, because there are a great many businesses for whom business rates is a significant burden. And it has to be paid irrespective of turnover. It's a fixed sum based on the notional re rental or the rateable value. So this is a, a large and uh, kind of looming burden in running a business. And I should say out of fairness, and particularly since we know there are some, in the some uh, of the independent retailers in the gallery, that I would actually be somewhat surprised, pleasantly surprised, if the independent retailers were... Uh, eligible for the small business bonus, to be, to be quite candid about this, um, uh, and that is because they are for the smallest businesses, and 92,000, two out of five, receive that benefit. Um, Mr Brown said, could we raise the thresholds, and what about stepping? As far as the thresholds is concerned, on the 11th of December, John Swinney uh, announced uh, a, the, an expansion of the business bonus by increasing the upper threshold for businesses with multiple properties from 25,000 to 35,000, and that was estimated to extend the benefit to over 4,000 additional eligible properties for the lifetime of this Parliament. We uh, also have more generous provision with regard to empty relief than 
south of the border, and Mr Mackay has introduced the a new incentive, fresh start relief, 50% for 12 months when some long-term empty property shops and offices become newly occupied. That would affect perhaps a small number of businesses, but is there nonetheless to encourage and promote additional economic activity in the retail sector. Um, reference was made to regulation. Red tape was, was one of the references. A, the Scottish Government brought in and I was the, the pilot of this, the Regulatory Reform Scotland Bill, which will make all public bodies subject to the duty of considering the economic impact of what they do. That general principle, I think, is one whose introduction was long overdue. It's not yet in force, but we expect regulators in particular to act as though it were in force right now. And that means that when taking decisions, Public bodies must take account of the economic impact, how they affect existing businesses. They must actively seek to ascertain how decisions they take will affect businesses. In town centre planning, my colleague Derek Mackay in July with COSLA announced the town centre first principle. And I think perhaps uh, reflecting some of the remarks that Mr Macdonald made about supermarkets, the recognition of the town centre first principle acknowledges that in some town centres, things are very difficult indeed. Empty shops, uh, a, a great deal of, of charity shops, uh, and perhaps a lack of choice to individuals in many towns throughout the country. I'm not going to name them all, but I think this is a tendency that we've noticed. And therefore, the town centre first principle, I think, is a recognition in principle that we need to redress the balance against perhaps the dominance of the supermarkets, as was mentioned by a great many speakers. Now, of course... Uh, a, uh, I think uh, Mark McCulloch mentioned new initiatives, uh, and we have had the small business bonus, the empty relief, the fresh start relief. We have got the business improvement districts, the town centre first principles. In one sense, I suspect, presiding officer, that for those in business here, most of these are in practical day-to-day -day terms, probably not of much relevance. Um, and also, those in business do not really expect or want government to come along with an occasional check among a grant. That's not really what businesses want. They don't want initiatives where there are handouts. They expect to run profitably, to run the show themselves, and to offer a good service to their customers and thereby make a, a decent living out of that and to look after their staff well and provide appropriate training. They're not looking for initiatives in the sense of handouts, and I'm sure that wasn't what was suggested. Uh, but, of course, we are very keen in the Scottish Government to work with the representative bodies, as reference was made to the Grocers' Federation, representatives of news agents, and also the Scottish Retail Consortium. And I, therefore, do, with my colleagues, uh, seek to have close relations with them, and that is something that I will continue to do. And to the independent retailers and their sector in general. I would say that you know, I have worked with individual businesses, not least in my constituency, to help them get access to other services, to become a post office, to retain their lottery outlet, for example, and other matters of that sort. But if there are general matters or initiatives or measures which are creating barriers to success that are identified by independent retailers, then I would be extremely happy to work with their representatives to that end. And I'm grateful that Mr Macdonald has given me the opportunity clearly to make that pledge. Um, I also represent the initiatives that have been taken by the Scottish Grocers Federation recently in terms of, of uh, <coughs> healthy living and healthy food, um, which we very much welcome. So um, we've covered quite a wide range of topics this evening, presiding officer, but I think most important of all, we've all of us across the different parties expressed our support, our appreciation for the economic, the practical and also the social, as Mary McCulloch said, function that smaller shops, independent shops do, competing against megaliths, dominant supermarkets who have different practices and purchasing practices and therefore find it uh, from time to time difficult to compete in that way but nonetheless, by their personal, local, effective, high-quality service, have proven to be very resilient in hard times. And the message, presiding officer, from all of us is, long may that continue. Thank you very much. That concludes Gordon MacDonald's debate. And I now close this meeting of Parliament.